The George Zimmerman trial is arguably one of the highest profile trials of the year. This trial shines a bright light on the very important issues of racial profiling and self-defense laws. I've not determined the guilt or the innocence of the accused because as a judge, I must wait until all the evidence and testimony has been submitted. Zimmerman is the Florida neighborhood watch captain accused of murdering 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Zimmerman, who was 28 at the time, admitted to shooting 17-year-old Martin on February 26, 2012 in Sanford, Florida. Martin was walking back to his father's fiance's home at night after buying some Skittles and an iced tea. Martin, like many teenagers, was wearing a hoodie. Zimmerman was on patrol as a neighborhood watchman. Zimmerman called the police and referred to Martin as a suspicious guy who, among other things, looks like he's up to no good. He said that he was black and wearing a hoodie. I listened to the 911 tape and the police dispatcher told Zimmerman not to follow Martin, but Zimmerman followed Martin anyway. On the 911 tape, we hear a cry for help, saying, no, no. We don't know if that cry came from Zimmerman or Martin. What we do know is that there was some sort of physical altercation and Zimmerman shot and killed an unarmed teenager. As Americans, especially African Americans, this case hits home. We've all heard of driving while black. Well, many people are wondering if this is a case of walking while black. Did Zimmerman zoom in on Martin and follow him simply because he was a young black male wearing a now infamous hoodie? Racial profiling is a form of discrimination that feeds off of negative stereotypes. It happens when law enforcement officials suspect question, stop, search, and often even arrest people just because that person is of a certain race or ethnicity. Zimmerman has pled not guilty to the charge of second-degree murder. Initially, it was believed that Zimmerman would use the stand-your-ground defense. Under the stand-your-ground defense, a person does not have to back down if he is at a location where he has the right to be and he is attacked. This law allows a person to meet force with force, even deadly force, to protect himself. Since the Stand Your Ground law took effect in 2005, deaths have shot up more than 200 percent in Florida. However, had Zimmerman used the Stand Your Ground law, a judge would have decided whether or not to proceed with a trial. Instead, Zimmerman decided to have a jury determine whether he acted in self-defense. Some legal analysts say this tactic gives Zimmerman a better chance of acquittal. We should all be watching this trial closely. This case rings the alarm about some hot-button issues that affect the integrity of our justice system. I know I'll be watching and commenting.